Riverdale may be ending soon, but it seems like the creators aren't done surprising fans with new twists. The most recent one being Veronica and Jughead coming together. Yes, we're talking about the unlikely collaboration between the two that we get to see in the latest episode. Why are we so excited about it? Watch this video to find out. Things that go bump in the night. Being part of the core four, Veronica and Jughead have graced our screens far too many times, but never together. Okay, not ever, but not enough times either. The dynamic between them was always barely casual compared to their relationship with the other core characters, except when this kiss happened. But we're not talking about that today. So when the 110th episode of the show rolled out, bringing us some long overdue screen time for this unlikely duo, we couldn't help but gush. Their story in the episode starts off pretty normally at the Babylonian, Veronica's casino, where she and Jughead are performing together with Jughead as Forsyth the Fantastic. We see them put up a pretty entertaining show with Forsyth impressing everyone with his mind-reading powers and Veronica, well, being her charming self. Now this scene alone shows us how good a team both of them make. The show may not have explored their chemistry very well, but it's still pretty entertaining to watch whenever they gave us a chance to see them together in such a dynamic. Until now, of course. Coming back to the episode, we loved seeing the duo woo their audience with their act. But it all goes bump in the night when Reggie happens. He's there for a sole purpose, to blackmail Veronica and get a cut out of her performance performance with Jughead. Now honestly, blackmail plots aren't anything new to begin with, but with Reggie, we're honestly a bit surprised and a little tired because dude, you need to pick a side already so fans can properly root for you or not. But anyway, Reggie's leverage is Hiram Lodge's death and he threatens Veronica to tell Percival about it unless she pays him. That can't be good. Percival can't know that it was Veronica who put a hit on Hiram Lodge. So instead, she chooses the next obvious way to fix it. No, not by paying him, but by eliminating the problem once and for all by asking Jughead to mind wipe Reggie so he could forget about her hit on her father. She's always been crafty but a mind wipe? Really? Haven't they learned that mind wipes are hardly ever fruitful and always end up coming back to bite you in the you know what? That's the most basic rule in all pop culture guys. But Jughead being well Jughead goes ahead and does it in a super cool sequence where he dives into Reggie's mind going through his memories which are shown to us as comic book pages until he finds the memory he needs to erase and voila, done and dusted. Now it's interesting to see this happen in the episode where he becomes Forsyth the Fantastic. That's because this act of his only expanded his powers, making it obvious that there's more to come from Forsyth than we've seen so far. Maybe it was his transition to this character that'll bring Veronica and Jughead closer. Next, the Jeronica ship. Okay, in all honesty, a single episode may not be enough to save this sinking Jeronica ship. Or is it Vughead? And a sinking ship it has been because no matter how fans plotted and planned to bring the two together, the showrunners never really listened. In fact, the most recent theory was their meeting in New York after the time jump and hooking up because, well, for the sake of it. But while that, along with other possibilities fans have suggested, may not have happened, it's possible that this line of events they're going with may bring them together. Because you know how we said the mind wipe could come back and make them pay? Maybe some vindication from the opposite side is what these two needed. It may not be the romantic relationship many are hoping for because if it didn't happen in the comics, it may not happen in the show either. Then again, when has the show ever stuck to the storyline the comics have told us? But there's more where that came from. That's right, the 110th episode didn't just show us an atypical pairing with Veronica and Jughead, but also showed us Archie and Tabitha's dilemma at the ever-present Pops Diner. We won't lie if we said that we're more than a little attached to that diner and wouldn't want it to be destroyed. So when Tabitha suggests taking it apart and rebuilding it somewhere else, we were looking forward to how that'll go until the ghost showed up. After a chilling scene where Tabitha sees the first of the ghosts, she enlists Heather to help her communicate with them, only to find out that the ghosts are tethered to the diner to witness the last fight between good and evil right here in Riverdale. Now that's foreshadowing a lot of possibilities, one of them being a major apocalyptic battle taking place, potentially. Could it happen? Maybe in season six. And considering how Heather was involved in revealing the purpose of these ghosts, will she have a bigger part to play? especially in Cheryl's storyline moving forward. Her background in Greendale also connects her with Sabrina. Maybe she'll make an appearance here as well. As for Heather and Cheryl's story, as interesting and inevitable as their pairing is, they are taking way too long to get together, which is a little too frustrating for our Riverdale loving hearts. But we have more episodes to fix that, so we'll wait. We just hope that this pairing doesn't take as long as Veronica and Jughead's alliance has, especially considering we've only got one season left to watch. Now, the Betty B story 
story. On the other side of town, figuratively, we have Betty going through her own issues. Her journey in the episode divulged a little about her powers and her family's history of grooming murderers. She obviously doesn't want to go the same way, and so is immediately on edge when she sees a red aura around her nephew Dagwood, and as a result, she steps up to get to the bottom of the issue. First, we see her return the cat Alice has gotten Juniper and Dagwood to keep it safe from her relatives. Then she gets the kids tested for the serial killer gene, and in a surprising turn of events, finds out that it's Juniper who has the gene, not her brother. Following this revelation, we see Dr. Curdle Jr. help her learn that her powers may not work on people who have the gene, or they don't until she knows about it. But the surprise of all surprises comes at the very end, when, as Betty's powers expand, she sees red auras around Alice and herself. So what does this mean for her? Is she a threat? To whom? Herself? Someone else? We'll just have to wait to find out. And while critics have talked about the aura stuff not having much import, Betty having a red aura herself may just push this story forward in the next season. That's something only the creators can tell. And maybe Jughead, too. Does it make sense? Let us explain. Next, the Jughead Paradox. You know how in the 100th episode of the show, we see the super crazy but fun journey of writer Jughead, sacrificing himself to be the battery that powers Riverdale with his stories so it wouldn't leech off of Riverdale. Yeah, about that. While the episode itself may have been fun, the theory they introduced in it was pretty close to the actual theory fans have been talking about since season one, and that is Riverdale not being real, but a figment of Jughead's imagination. Hear us out, guys. This may even make sense. Eager fans on Reddit and across the entire internet have had this belief for years. The Jughead, being the narrator, is also the one who's created this story, which explains the mysterious supernatural things that keep happening in the show. It may seem far-fetched, but think about it. He's the one telling you everything, even stories that he has no involvement in, and even his own death scenes. People have suggested that Jughead narrating Riverdale's story is actually him reading his book about the perfect murder mystery we've often seen him talk about in the show, one that will take his grandfather, Forsyth Pendleton Jones I's legacy forward. And if that's the case, it would make sense for him to embrace his Forsyth persona and be the guy who can not only erase memories, but maybe even create new ones. Admit it, he could do that with his powers. So maybe the recent episode, or this entire season, is a premise to this very narrative. But whether it is Jughead thinking up a story in his mind, or these are actual events happening in a pocket dimension, we're ready to see what unfolds next, especially with Jughead and Veronica's new alliance, and the core force expanding powers. That's a wrap for this video. What are your predictions about Veronica and Jughead's story? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.